this is the mood board that I created a couple weeks ago. And now that I am creating the finished artwork, I thought I would just share the thought process behind this. It's an exploration of different parts of myself. This particular one is focusing on the fact that I am a Cancer zodiac sign. It is my sun sign. And I'm not super big on astrology, but sometimes I read it here and there and I'm really surprised at how much it resonates with me. So that's why I decided to create an artwork of what it means to me to be a Cancer sun sign. Cancers are known to be protective of others, but also using their hard shell to also help protect themselves. So I thought that was more accurate for me, the fact that I'm very protective of myself. And so I wanted to create an artwork that tells that story. This is the main image that really inspired me. It's pretty much as accurate as possible to the pose, the vibe that I wanted to capture with this artwork, especially with the idea of a hard shell. I thought the gigantic shells that these figures are resting upon was exactly what I wanted to incorporate in my artwork, but I wanted more of a stiff, straight up pose rather than a sleeping pose. Here I have my mood board. This depicts more of the vibe, the color palette that I want to create with this artwork. It feels very ethereal. It feels very serene and calm. That's the whole idea that I have, especially with the two figures very relaxed with each other, very comfortable. I thought that could help tell the story of being in a safe space, feeling protected, and also feeling protective. So I ended up with this as the initial sketch, and I used tracing paper to try and experiment with the hairstyle, with the clothes, and determine how I was going to use those to help depict the story that I wanted to create with this piece. As you can see, our main figure is sitting in this kind of relaxed position, I would say, with her knees up. And she has her hand over this second figure, which is resting on her lap. And they are cocooned by this large shell. And just to establish context and background, I included the waxing crescent moon which is a moon phase that I thought I really resonated with. I literally just searched up what the different moon phases mean, and I just picked one that I liked. I tried to keep the sketch as rough as possible based on what I learned from my previous trial of a 3D paper illustration. Then I created this digital image, which is going to be my color reference slash lighting reference. As you can see, I ended up using the moon as my source of light. And then I tried to incorporate as much as possible the blues and paints from my mood board. I'm gonna try and achieve something that is in between this more darker contrasty color palette and the lighter color palette that I have in my mood board. What we have right here is my plan of action for creating the different layers for this 3D paper illustration, the previous artwork that I created as my reference, because even though I really like how this turned out and I learned a lot of things from it, one of the things that I realized was I had a very vague plan of what layers I was going to extract and make 3D, especially with her clothes, for example. I think I could have definitely made that 3D and then added a lot of depth to this 3D illustration. And so I decided to use Procreate to create a better plan of action. And I worked on this 
actually quite a few times. I had lots of variations. I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to draw, for example, the main figure, whether I was going to draw her naked and literally just play paper dolls and then draw the outfit on top and then all of that. I wasn't really sure, but I kind of went with a more lazy route <laughs> where I have completely hidden the figure and I think it won't be seen as much anyway because I have quite a few layers going on. I just have like the main body parts like the arms and the head and then on the next layer I have the nightgown and the shawl and I want to extract some parts of the hair even add some flyaways and then have the sleeping figure and then even make her arms more 3D and then have the blanket and the knees covering her. And then in the background, I have like the ocean and the sky, and then I have the shell and I'm gonna extract some clouds and then also make the moon pop out a little bit more. And essentially the next step for me is to put all of these layers onto the computer and print them as faint as possible onto the watercolor paper. And then we're going to create the final sketch and then add the watercolors, add the gouache, everything to hopefully create the finished artwork. just finished doing the sketch for everything that I'm painting in watercolor and the ones that I'm painting with gouache I decided to just do a rough sketch with them because the pencil marks won't really show through so there's no point in me doing all of the shading but I'm really trying my best not to cut out these figures because a part of me just wants to cut them out and put them all together to see if I have the shadow placement correct, but I think I'll just have to be patient and wait. So my plan is to watercolor these figures and then leave everything for gouache the next day. And once I'm done with that, I'll be able to actually cut the pieces out and make some adjustments if I need to, especially with the lighting and the shadows. And hopefully after that, I can put it together and be done.
getting pretty close to finishing this artwork, which I am so happy about because I have been working on this for a few weeks now and I am just happy to move on and do other things, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. I even got a frame that I bought from the thrift store which ended up being the size for the artwork. Originally I wanted the artwork a lot bigger but I didn't want to splurge on a frame and I found one that was exactly what I was looking for at the thrift store and so I bought it and the pieces aren't stuck down yet but this just gives me an idea of what it's going to look like especially with all of the colors and initially I was going to do this and then see if there was anything that needed to be fixed. I had to recolor this area right here because it didn't quite match up. I had to cut away some parts as well because they just didn't match up. Other parts I had to paint again, like the bottom of this. And what I also did was, you can't really see, but I added some markers to the edges so that when you're looking at it, you can't really see the white of the paper. And I think that is a nice added touch that I'm going to do for future 3D paper illustrations like this. I'm just making sure that the paper is nice and flat. I used 300 GSM watercolor paper this time around, which I'm really happy with because it's it is pretty sturdy, like for the small pieces that we have. I'm going to be using this foam tape. We're going to put down our very first layer and it's actually quite scary because number one, I put quite a lot of effort into this painting. I'm going to stick it on there permanently and that's a bit daunting. Okay. Might do this one next.
this is a side by side of the artwork that I just finished, which is on the right, and then my first 3D paper illustration, which is on the left. And if you have watched the video for the left artwork, you would have potentially seen my video where I had commentary of all of the things that I liked and did not like with that artwork. I had so many notes for myself on how to improve and I definitely ticked a lot of those boxes and I addressed those notes when creating the most recent artwork, but as I look at it now, I definitely have notes for myself once again because it is only my second try with this medium and I'm constantly learning and trying to fine tune and improve how I create 3D paper illustrations. Starting with what I think I did well was the depth that I was able to create, like for example the hair. I love that part so much and then all of the different layers here between her blouse, the blanket, the arm, the figure, and then her hands, and then the knees at the very front. I am really happy with my choice of areas that I decided to extract and make 3D. And while you can't actually see the ocean that I painted or even the bottom part of the shell, I think just the fact that they're there and I also put a lot of care into them just makes me appreciate this painting or this um, 3D paper illustration overall. What I would definitely improve though is the shadows. I think when I was painting the areas separately, especially for the figure over here, which Initially, I wanted her to be shrouded in darkness with only a sliver of her face being shown, but she's not shrouded in darkness at all. Even her clothes are like the exact same teal blue as this one here, and it was just something that I'd forgotten, but that is completely fine because this is only my second one, like I said. I will try and improve more and more with my future 3D paper illustrations. Overall, I am so happy with how this artwork turned out and it's given me lots of new ideas on how I can further refine my technique for creating 3D paper illustrations. I would love to change the frame, but for now it works. And I actually can't wait to find another frame just like this or maybe even bigger, but essentially a shadow box um, frame as well so that I can use that for a new 3D paper illustration artwork.